there, I'm Ms. Artastic, and today we are going to be learning all about landscape art. Did you know that landscape painting became popular in the 18th century? Painters often use it to demonstrate their appreciation for natures and evoke different emotions within their viewers. Landscape art shows natural scenes like lakes or buildings, um, hills and mountains, the ocean, and often uh, really landscape art is of a place, any place that takes, that captures the essence of the outdoors. So we're going to learn all about landscape painting and landscape art in this episode and we're also going to draw a little happy landscape um, but also create a watercolor painting of a landscape. So let's grab our art making supplies and let's make some art. If you're a teacher, make sure you head on over to the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers Store by searching Ms. Artastic on TPT to find hundreds and hundreds of art lesson plans and resources that you can use in your classroom. They're all easy to use, kid friendly, engaging, and fully prepped so you can say bye bye to the stress and hello to success. Now let's head on in to this episode. I'm going to take a little look at the different parts of a landscape. So landscape art has three main parts. There is the background. That's the stuff that's very far away in the back of the painting. Then there's the middle ground, which is the areas in between what's closest to the viewer and the very, very far away. So it's called the middle ground. But then there's the elements in a landscape artwork that are closest to the viewer, and those are called the foreground. So there is background, middle ground, foreground. It's also very helpful to work off from the back of your artwork to the very front. So we work on the background first, then you fill in the details of your middle ground, and finally you create your foreground, which are the elements that are closest to the viewer, but also probably the most detailed and largest because they are closest and you can see those details better. Whereas if you look outside, it's kind of hard to see all the details of things very, very far away. You're not gonna see birds in a mountain way, way, way out in the distance. It's too far for you to see. You're not gonna every single little leaf and every single little branch because it's so far away. But you might see every single little leaf and every single little branch and the birds on a tree if it's very close to you. So those are things to consider when you're working on creating a landscape artwork. Remember to work from your back of the picture, background, then your middle ground, then your front, your foreground. Um, focusing on all your details in the foreground. And if you want, you can always try using atmospheric perspective, which is things farther away are lighter than things closest to us, which are more vibrant and darker, um, to create a sense of depth in your landscape artwork. So now if you go outside and you look at mountains far away, or if you look at things that are far away, or trees far away, you'll notice they kind of look lighter than the trees in front of you. Now that is because there are particles in the air in between you and those far away things. Clouds, pollution, just things, air, dust. So it makes it look lighter, even though it's not. And that is called atmospheric perspective, which is the element of our space and value, all helping us make a landscape artwork. Now let's head on over to the art studio because we got to draw a happy little landscape and also make a watercolor landscape painting. Let's make some art. All right, let's do our happy little landscape. We're gonna start off with a nice little tree in the front here. We'll just add a nice little evergreen. Maybe a happy little bush in the corner. Some 
curling lines. Can add some grass. And then we'll add a line here. Put some grass here and there. Let's add a few more trees. And then we're gonna add some hills and the sun with some sun rays. Let's add some cute little faces to everything. So we'll add some circles on each side. On our trees, sun, and bush. In each eye, we're gonna add a smaller circle. color in the dark of the eyes, leaving this circle white. Color in the dark of the eyes, even those little circles white. Then we're gonna add a line between each of those eyes. Then add a U below. Then a curving line down from one corner to the bottom. dark of the mouth, leaving the tongue white. And now we have a cute little happy landscape. Let's grab our favorite choice color and our making mediums and color it in.
types of swirls for the sky and wind. And just like that, your happy little landscape is done. All right, we're gonna do a watercolor landscape. So I'm gonna get my watercolor paper. If you don't have it, just use thick paper and a watercolor brush or a brush that you have and watercolor paints. Most important part is the watercolor paints. We're gonna start off with the background. So we're going to start off by mixing a bit of blue and a yellow. paint a hill in the background. Pick it. We want it to be nice and light, so we want this to be very watery. Because it's far away. Now into another one. That's just green only. And now I'm going to just bring that water down. Okay, so now we got two hills. Now let's add a lake in the, in the front here. So we gotta add some blue. Now we're gonna water it down. Water it down, water it down. Water it down. Make a nice little lake shape here. Let it blend up into those hills. This could be a little bit more vibrant because to just green along the sides. So now we have our background and we're working on our middle ground and foreground slowly. Background, middle ground, foreground. It's very wet, and we're gonna build on top of this. This is our base. We're gonna blend with my lake. Now, we're gonna make this foreground pop, so now we're gonna take our green, and we're going to more green along the bottom. Okay, oops. So now I have it darker below. Take some white only. We're gonna add some white. Oops, I got green on it. Sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Add some highlights on our lake. a bit of black with green to make a shade. And we're gonna do a couple trees here. We're gonna do one here. So we're gonna draw one lying down. And one here. I'm gonna draw strokes down one side.
And on the other side. Maybe we want to have a couple of trees out in the background. Now, if you do any in the back background, they're going to be smaller. They're farther away. You also want to try to make them a little lighter. We can add a sun. Raise, I'll add some lines around. Maybe we want to add grass. So we'll add, now that our base is dry, we can add lines. Grass. Lines. Make your grass blades in the front. Little grass, blade, grass blades in the back. So as you work your way back into the middle ground and the background, you're going to get smaller and smaller. to the viewer, but not in the back because it's too far away. And just like that, your landscape is done. Well, my friend, that's it for this episode. If you have completed these artworks and you had tons of fun, please give this video a big thumbs up to show your appreciation and subscribe to this channel. If you complete these works and you snap a picture uh, with your phone, whatever device, make sure you so share them to social media and take me at Ms. Artastic or use the hashtag Ms. Artastic so that I can check out your completed works. As well, if you're looking for some more art ideas that you can do at home or in a classroom, 
grab my free guide up here. It's super easy to download and check out lots of different art ideas that you can do at home, anywhere, anytime. And if you're wanting to access my art lesson library full of hundreds of different art lessons, make sure you head on over to artastickids.com and join the Artastic Kids online membership so you can make art anywhere, anytime, on any device using some really fun art mediums. See you in the next episode.